from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, your source for the Department of Energy's environmental cleanup news. EnergyCast starts now. I'm Summer Dash. Welcome to your September episode of Energy Cast. We're working on something really big for you right now. Our team just got back from the National Cleanup Workshop in DC, and we are taking you on the road with us. Here's some video of that event. We also bumped into some familiar faces like Congressman Chuck Fleischman. Our local leaders took their spots on panels and led important discussions about the future of the environmental management industry. We learned a lot. We've got so much to report to you from this event that we're making October a special dedicated entirely to those conversations had while we were in the nation's capital. Today's episode is going to be a little bit shorter than you're used to, but we've still got some really important headlines and stories to bring you. EnergyCast starts now. We've got brand new video of a reactor being successfully taken down in Oak Ridge. This is the low intensity test reactor, also known as Building 3005. What you're seeing is the last phase of demolition on this project here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Getting to this point took nearly five years of planning and deactivation work. Employees had to navigate dangerous structural concerns all along the way. The training reactor became world famous when a photographer first captured a blue glow caused by radiation in the pool above it. That photo appeared on the cover of the October 1951 issue of the Scientific American. Now fast forward, that facility has been closed for decades and had deteriorated quite significantly. That's why demolition was necessary. This is the second reactor EM and UCOR have taken down at ORNL, both happening over the past year. The first was the nearby Bulk Shield reactor. This animation shows the plan to take down 3005. It's a slow and tedious process, making sure to keep workers and the community safe. It's a big challenge all the way around. But at the end of the day, you just got to grind your way through it and you got a great dedicated workforce that's, once, that's, that's dedicated to the mission and, and uh, we're continuing to make it happen because of them. This was a tricky project. The facility's original drawings didn't include all necessary information. Workers used high-tech equipment to detect radiological material that hadn't been previously documented. The goal was to take this down by the end of 2023. They made that happen. It's also a good thing for the environment, right? It's a good thing for the public. Uh, you know, these, these facilities are old and they do have high, high, high levels of contamination. So we want to mitigate and prevent the release of that contamination to the environment. So we remove it, place it in a safe state, put it in a safe repository and clear that land and protect the environment and allow the mission to continue with the expansion and the construction of new facilities. This wasn't one of the largest reactors on site, but it did play a critical role in training. It operated from 1951 to 1968. With demolition complete, that land will now be available for ORNL to reuse. Now we shift to the Y-12 National Security Complex. That's where crews are making progress to start the next big demolition project. Teams have finished deactivation tasks in all the above ground floors in the Alpha 2 facility that were kicked off in 2020. The massive former uranium enrichment building dates back to the Manhattan Project. Before demolition can start, crews must deactivate the basement and reroute active utilities around the structure. Now, once that's finished, crews are scheduled to begin tearing it all down next spring. We'll have more coverage for you when that gets underway. What is a better place to work than Dollywood? Well, two spots in Oak Ridge, according to the latest rankings on the Knoxville News Sentinel's top workplaces list. We know the Oak Ridge area is a great place to work, but now it is very official. Oak Ridge schools took third place in the businesses with more than 500 employees category. Cleanup contractor UCOR also made that list coming in at number six. This marks multiple years earning a spot for both. And the top spot went to Knoxville based Ed Financial. Dollywood though, rounded out the list at seventh. And yes, that means Oak Ridge schools and UCOR beat out Dollywood for top places to work. Oak Ridge has a new city manager. Randall Heeman comes to us from Mooresville, North Carolina, where he served as town manager. He spent more than three decades working for various cities and holding multiple leadership positions. Much of his work has focused on downtown development. His first day is November 1st. The former Oak Ridge city manager, by the way, retired after more than a decade in the position earlier this year. 
Oak Ridge firefighters are encouraging people who live in the area to participate in the Yellow Dot program. It's to allow first responders to know a bit about your medical condition in case of a crash. You fill out a medical information form. You can include details like recent surgeries, hospital preferences, and insurance information. You then get a Yellow Dot sticker, folder, and info sheet. They ask the folder and document stay in your glove compartment. That sticker goes on the driver's side rear window. This way, they'll know to look for it and be better able to help you in case of an emergency. Well, September is here and you know what that means. No, I'm not just talking about pumpkin spice lattes, but that too, some relief from the summer temperatures. As we welcome the start of fall, Energy Cast's Cameron Jacobs shares some free outdoor activities you can enjoy right here in Oak Ridge. I mean, the Dirt Lab is about three acres of dedicated skills-based mountain biking. Uh, so you can train and practice for those harder features without having to, you know, go on the far side of the ridge, risk getting lost, and heaven forbid you get injured. Here you're right next to the park, it's a lot lower risk, fewer trees, uh, so it's much easier to progress. If you haven't been there yet, this area is a must for outdoor adventures this fall. The Dirt Lab opened in 2021 thanks to contributions from the Department of Energy and its contractor, UCOR, and it's helping create a mountain biking heaven for bikers of all skill levels. Stanky says families of all ages are tearing up the trails. I mean, you can bring your kids out. We've got people out here on 12 inch wheeled like stride bikes, just ripping it on the pump track. Had no idea the kids were gonna like this one so much. And if mountain biking isn't your thing, Oak Ridge has plenty to offer like disc golf right here at Carl Yearwood. Carl Yearwood is nestled inside the city of Oak Ridge and it's just one of many parks residents can enjoy. This nine hole course offers different challenges and unique obstacles like this hanging basket. This short course is open year round for free. UCOR's Community Outreach Coordinator Shannon Potter says the company is focused on making the community a better place and local investments in bike trails and greenways is one of the many ways it's working to do that. UCOR's company mission is about making communities better places to live through our investment, involvement, and actions. Our view is that UCOR has a fundamental responsibility to be good corporate stewards and to invest in our host communities. We had some community partners that helped enable some of these outcomes, such as the Clinch Valley Trail Alliance, Explore Oak Ridge, the Oak Ridge Parks and Recs Department, and the City of Oak Ridge leadership. Through our community outreach, we are proud to enhance the recreational and the greenways and blueways assets for the Oak Ridge area. Whether you're into mountain biking, hiking, or disc golf, there are lots of options when you're in Oak Ridge that won't break the bank. As the weather cools, it's the perfect time to get outside and explore. In our area, we are blessed with an abundance of outdoor recreation, whether it be parks in the community, walking trails, hiking trails, fun on the lake, or even the nearby national park. For EnergyCast, I'm Cameron Jacobs. Recently, two leaders from the United Kingdom visited us in Oak Ridge. There are several major sites overseas that face similar issues to ours. The duo sat down with our leadership team to share what works and what doesn't when it comes to cleanup. That chat is coming up. Big stories happening across the complex right now. We're bringing you major EM news from coast to coast. DOE has announced $15 billion are available for companies that will retool existing factories to support future electric vehicle production. The goal is to retain jobs in the manufacturing sector and bolster domestic supply chains. And DOE has issued its first request to identify organizations that may be interested in leasing federal land for clean energy projects. 
The first initiative involves 19,000 acres in Hanford, Washington. Some more big news out of Hanford. Crews there have poured the first batches of frit into a melter. The material was heated to more than 2,000 degrees to create a molten pool of glass. Future operations will mix waste with that material and convert tank waste into a form that's safe for permanent disposal. Next, we're heading overseas. EM Senior Advisor Ike White traveled to Japan for a forum where he and more than 500 others shared cleanup lessons and learned about progress happening at Fukushima. Finally, through a DOE internship program, Native American students are finding career opportunities they're passionate about and benefit their communities. The year-long program, administered through Sandia National Laboratories, is helping students apply their education on energy projects that can be used in tribal lands. And you know what, back here at home, we're bringing people from around the world together in East Tennessee. We had a lovely chat with two environmental leaders from the United Kingdom recently while they visited the Oak Ridge Reservation. They sat down with our leadership team to share what works and what doesn't when it comes to cleanup. You know, there are several major sites overseas that face quite similar issues. So we asked, out of all the nuclear cleanup sites in the United States, why did they want to visit ours? Plus, will this collaboration continue in the future? And perhaps most importantly, what did they think of Calhoun's? The way I want to do this, I'm not even going to ask you know, <coughs> super individualized questions. I really want this to just be a conversation between all of us. So whoever wants to chime in, feel free. Don't worry about interrupting. It's all good. <laughs> so uh, my Great. first question is, of course, Laura, you were out their way first about a couple months ago. And um, I understand you all have a, a pretty large site. So Laura, when you were there, uh, what was that like for you? And what would you tell folks about what you saw and the work over there? Really, the lessons are that we share a lot of commonality in terms of the challenges that we face and how, to de how we need to deal with those challenges. What brought all of us together? Why Oak Ridge for both of you? Oak Ridge was the, the one site that I really wanted to come and see, not just for what it's doing today, but what it did yesterday and what it's going to do in the future. Getting information, sharing experience, because nuclear decommissioning is a global industry where we have one language. We share some common opportunities and as well as some common challenges. And I think you know, it's, it's sometimes reassuring to see that, to think, well, you know, we're not the only ones facing these challenges and let's find the solution together but um, there's clearly opportunities for us to work closer together and I think uh, we're just at the start of that connection I think and it would be great to sort of build on that in the next few days. It's, it's just really uh, exciting and it gives me a huge sense of pride to be part of the cleanup program here in Oak Ridge and be able to not only see that what we're doing is adding value to the community but it's also been recognized by our uh, counterparts across across the world. And that whole point of creating a future for this community has really grasped me that they really have got that. You know, we cannot leave these legacies to future generations. It's morally irresponsible. We must do what we're doing in an efficient, effective way, but in a sustainable way as well. And if, you know, the sustainability aspects of the conversations we've had are really important and I think the work that's happening in the community here is just fantastic and having been in the community for the last few days it's really exciting and I went and saw Oppenheimer the movie while I was here. here. I saw it here, I thought immerse yourself Wow. <laughs> and uh, so I was the industrial tourist for the last few days and I've thoroughly enjoyed myself plus Calhoun's barbecue restaurant was very good and last night at the seasons i love it you really committed you were like i'm gonna see oppenheimer in one of the main locations and i didn't know that dolly parton was the most famous resident of knoxville <laughs>
uh, to understand and be able to engage and share the experiences that I've had over the years. Um, it's overwhelming to see the growth of women in the workforce and also the engagement that we are now experiencing through employee resource groups. Members meet monthly. Speakers have included women who serve in top leadership roles for DOE's environmental management program, Y-12 production office, and United Cleanup Oak Ridge and Amentum. Thanks for watching our September episode. Next month, we're bringing you our first special edition energy cast. We'll be devoting our entire coverage to the National Cleanup Workshop in Washington, D.C. Our team will bring you interviews with members of Congress, regulators, government officials, and business leaders. We're going to highlight some of the shining successes and explore top challenges facing nuclear cleanup projects all across the country, from startups to teardowns, from waste disposal to advanced energy. We're going to have it all in your October episode. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for Energy Cast. New episodes come out on the third Sunday of the month. You can watch on air and online. We post Energy Cast episodes on our Facebook and YouTube pages the day after they air. Head on over to follow us on our social media accounts. We're always happy to answer questions and share information with you there as well. And remember, if you work in environmental management in Oak Ridge, keep us in mind if you come across a story. We're always looking for news tips and story ideas from across the reservation. Email your idea to oakridgeem at orem.doe.gov. Let us know there. You might just see it right here. We'll leave you with one last look at the National Cleanup Workshop in DC. EnergyCast was on the road. We'll be bringing you those stories from our nation's capital next month. See you then.